Hey everybody, welcome to a new episode of the vlog. Uh, I'm sure you guys have noticed there are a million of those sort of tag chain Facebook posts and Instagram posts of like there's the uh, tag a song every 30 or every day for 30 days challenge. Um, like the 30 songs that are most important to you. Um, and I'm seeing just everybody posting these because it's quarantine time and there's nothing better to do. <laughs> uh, one of the things that's been going around is tag the 10 albums that mean the most to you. And uh, I've seen it in a couple of different versions. I've seen one where it says, just tag the picture of the album art with no explanation. And I think there's another one that says, explain why you enjoy these albums and why these are the most important albums to you. Uh, I am not a fan of the Facebook chain, so I haven't been really using them. But I was nominated by uh, my good friend Gary Redman uh, to do the everyday post a new picture of an album that influenced you, uh, 10 albums in total. And I just, I didn't really... I've been going back and forth on it because um, it is cool. I like to share my record collection, as you guys know. But the point of that is I think they're just trying to make it viral. And every day out of the ten, you're supposed to submit an album and also tag a new person. And then it's supposed to become this whole viral thing. I didn't feel like tagging anyone uh, every day. I didn't feel like dominating my newsfeed for ten days with this thing. So I thought, screw it, let's just make a video out of it. So here is the... <laughs> vlog video version where I'm just going to show you guys the 10 albums that mean the most to me because hey it does make a decent video concept even if I don't so much love the Facebook sharing things anyway uh, we're going to start uh, with if you guys have uh, been following this channel this is a bit of an obvious choice for me it's Kiss and it's Kiss Alive this album specifically means a great deal to me because this is the first album that I ever bought, uh, or excuse me, I didn't even buy it. This was the first LP that I ever played. I was super into vinyl even before I ever had any records, uh, just because uh, even already when I was like 11 or 12 and I was a Kiss fan, I used to look up all the old Kiss albums and like what inserts used to come with them and stuff. Kiss was one of those bands that liked to include stickers and booklets and stuff. Uh, and so I always wanted a Kiss album, but I didn't even have a record player. And then for, I don't know, my 15th birthday or something, my parents bought me a record player along with a stack about yay high of, of, of vinyl records, and I've turned that into close to a thousand over the years. But this is the first vinyl album I ever spun. It's got the gatefold in there, and it's also this one. I was very thrilled that it had the original... Uh, eight page little booklet there with this cool shot in the middle of it. Uh, now you'll notice I played the absolute crap out of this to the point where I had to uh, like scotch tape the uh, the spine back together. I have since bought an upgrade copy that actually plays a lot better but that's number one is Kiss Alive for number two here I'm gonna put uh, the Beatles with the Beatles um, which uh, back in high school uh, I sort of discovered how awesome libraries are for music and uh, for DVDs and stuff. I never really got books out of the library, but uh, I would get CDs from there all the time. And uh, they had uh, all of the Beatles uh, albums. And I remember they would always be super on hold and you'd have to wait a month for them to like <laughs> become available. But uh, I think the first one I listened to was with the Beatles, I was probably in like grade nine, and I was like, whoa, these guys wrote, I, I, obviously I knew these Beatles had written some awesome songs, but uh, um, it really, listening to this album um, on CD, totally focusing on it without it just being in the background made me really gain a new appreciation for all of these songs. I remember upon first listening, my favorite song on this album was of all things it was you really got a hold on me which is not a beatles original of course written by Smokey robinson in 1962 for the miracles this specific pressing is the new uh mono vinyl reissue the beatles 
mono reissues and even the stereo vinyl reissues are all very very well done all right you guys are gonna have to hear me out on these next two uh i may have to do some explaining not a huge country guy but i'm gonna throw on a <laughs> casey musgraves same trailer different park into this list just because um we all have that one summer that we have tons of memories out of and often it's like that first or second summer out of high school and it's definitely for me I have a lot of memories of all the fun stuff I did in the summer of 2014 with some friends of mine. And uh, this album, I don't know why, but one friend of mine specifically was really into this album and just had it on, on repeat. And it kind of forced me to rethink my opinions on country music. <laughs> um, still not my favorite genre, but um, I listen to a lot more country than I ever did before, mostly thanks to this album. So I have a lot of great memories attached to this one and it really is a great album i think it still holds up and now for something completely different um again you're gonna have to hear me out on this one but for number five i'm putting the pirates of penzance uh or excuse me number four this is number four um i was in the reason this album means a lot to me is i was in uh a little musical theater club uh that for a couple of years while I was in high school uh, where we would, it was like a two week summer camp. We'd get the scripts on day one, we'd audition for parts on day two and we'd perform on day like 12. It was insane uh, to learn a play in like 10 days and just blow, do it in one of the years, one of my most favorite years doing that. We did the Pirates of Penzance. We used to do a lot of the old Gilbert and Sullivan ones. So this one just brings back a lot of memories from that time period. And, uh, you know, it's also got possibly my favorite singer ever, Linda Ronstadt, on that album here. Um, all right. Uh, next, we got uh, something that's actually signed. Uh, I'm cheating a little bit. This is not an album. This is an EP. This is the Animals number 1 EP, originally released in 1965. This was a 50th anniversary uh, record store day release for, for, for 2015. And I got to actually... Meet Eric Burden on Record Store Day because he was doing a gig in Vancouver, which I got to see from the front row, which was amazing. And he just stopped by a record store. I can't remember which one. But he stopped by a record store and was signing copies. So I got to actually meet him and got him to sign uh, this copy of this album. So that's uh, just invaluable to me. And um, now for these last five, these last five albums are pretty much all the same. These are pretty much the albums that my parents had on repeat in cars when I was like eight or nine years old when I was a little kid and we'd do like road trips and stuff. That's what these next five albums have in common. And uh, first of all, uh, we're going to go with another signed one. Um, this is Chilliwack's Segway, um, which is just their greatest hits album. My parents had it, I believe, on tape. And we used to always play this album when we would go on road trips to see our family in Chilliwack, which is about a 45 minute drive east of here, which is about how long this album is. So this album always has that specific drive. Uh, that's always what I think about when I listen to this greatest hits package. Um, I got it signed when I saw Chilliwack a couple of years back. Uh, Bill Henderson here is the only one of these people who've signed it that actually was involved with all of these songs. The rest of these are just the newer Chilliwack band member. That's still really cool. Uh, this is probably the album that got me into Billy Joel, Glass Houses, uh, which my parents used to play over and over in the car. You guys will know from watching this vlog that Kiss is probably my favorite band. My, but uh, Billy Joel might be a close second for favorite artists of all time for me. I've collected pretty much all the Billy Joel albums, but this one started it off. And I do believe this is actually my mom's old copy of this album from back in the 80s, so that's pretty cool. Another album they used to play all the time, Super Tramp, Breakfast in America, great album. For some reason, I used to think that uh, they had a, uh, that this was, uh, this woman was actually like a member of Super Tramp when I used to look at this cover art. And I don't know why, but just something about this cover art used to, I used to think was just hilarious when I was a kid. Of course, I never had the LP back then. I was just looking at, like squinting and trying to look at the artwork on the old CD, but uh, it's also just a great album. Love it. And then the last two are probably obvious choices. 
Uh, they're two of the most successful albums ever released, but they're albums my parents used to play in the car all the time, and therefore albums that I knew backwards and forwards by the time I was like seven years old. You got Fleetwood Mac Rumors, and you got Hotel California as well. These are from a very similar time period, and they're, uh, you know, they are just... There's almost nothing that I can say about these albums, because they're just so absurdly famous that, uh, you know, everything's already been said about them, but they're, uh, they're, 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 they sold very well for a reason, because they're amazing albums. You'll notice I kind of ruined the corners of this, because when I was in, when I was probably just getting out of high school and I was really, uh, expanding my vinyl collection, I, I decided to basically wallpaper my room with albums, but I didn't do it in the proper way. I just put little sticky things on it and I stuck it to the wall. Stupid move on my part. Because I had it on the wall like this. And then, uh, yeah. Or no, I remember what it was. I had it just, just the front cover like this, but I stuck the back to it and it would just swing open. So I was like, oh, I know, I'll just like... Use a thing and it'll keep the gatefold closed. And then when I decided to stop doing that, I then had damaged a couple of my favorite albums. That was stupid. But anyway, those are 10 albums that mean a lot to me. Uh, are they the 10 most important albums to me? Probably. Uh, I tried to think of that, but uh, you never know. Probably every couple of weeks I'll change my opinion on what albums are most important to me but uh, as of right now that is accurate thank you so much for watching uh, check out the description uh, for those of you who don't know I'm also a professional musician myself you can check out the description for a uh, list of where you can find my music where it's sold or streamed online uh, be sure to like this video if you like what you see uh, subscribe to this channel if you've been enjoying my videos and you can ring the notification bell if you want to be notified whenever I upload a new video, which should hopefully be tomorrow and most days for the foreseeable future. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you with a new vlog again soon. See you then.